Hello and welcome back. Uh, again, my name is Maddie Guerin. Uh, I work with Neighborhood Sun and the customer service and the marketing department. Uh, and this is the first video that we wanted to uh, provide to our customers and prospective customers explaining exactly how electricity works, how the grid works, uh, and uh, a little bit of the history behind electricity. Uh, let me start uh, by first, <clears throat> and please excuse my drawing, Zach is the artist in the office. Um, but I'm going to start by just drawing a little town right here with some houses. I know these look like Monopoly houses. As long as we're doing Monopoly houses, let's do a hotel because they need electricity as well. These houses and the hotel all need electricity. Uh, and back in the late 1800s, uh, the first power plant was built uh, in London. Um, but uh, it was soon expanded into the United States. These were powered by coal and later with uh, gas, oil, other forms of fossil fuel. These, while great for providing electricity, also provided a lot of pollution. Uh, if you've read your history books, uh, you know that in 1952, uh, there was a terrible smog incident in London uh, that caused uh, thousands of uh, deaths, as well as uh, you know tens of thousands of people that ended up in the hospital uh, with health problems uh, due to the smog that was created uh, from the power plant. Now, once that power is generated, um, it doesn't go directly to the homes. It goes to uh, a holding tank, uh, which is often referred to as the grid. Um, the best way that I like to think about the grid is it's like a big water tower where all the electricity is stored and from that water tower there are pipes that run from the water tower to the consumers. The electricity is generated and put into the water tower and I'm using black obviously because it's coal. I'm going to put some dirty electricity into the water tower. As these consumers are uh, using the electricity, it continues to burn and continues to provide electricity to the water tower. Um, the water tower, the pipes, uh, the entire infrastructure uh, is what is often referred to as the grid. Um, and so when we talk about the grid, uh, think of it as the entire infrastructure, the wires, everything that runs from your home to the holding station uh, and to and from the coal burning power plant. Uh, <clears throat> so back in the 1800s, up until well halfway into the 1900s, coal was about 95% of the electricity generated, particularly on the East Coast. Um, because of the acid rain, because of the incident in um, London, uh, technology was developed to make the coal a little bit cleaner. Uh, but let's be clear, there is no such thing as clean coal. Uh, just getting it out of the ground causes pollution. Uh, and then also after it's burned, there is sludge. Sludge has to be stored. It's filled with heavy metals, mercury, uh, and oftentimes, uh, as in North Carolina about a decade ago, uh, the holding tanks that they have for the sludge breaks and, and can uh, really damage uh, water supplies and in some cases destroy towns. Um, now, in a search for better forms of electricity, windmills were built. These windmills are also connected to the grid. So now, that holding tank has some cleaner electricity in it. Um, and we definitely support um, people using wind energy as opposed to coal. Unfortunately, most wind energy that we get, particularly here in Maryland, is coming from out of state. It's coming from Pennsylvania, Texas, Kansas, uh, Oklahoma. Um, and of course they need uh, economies uh, supported there. Uh, but we want to support the economy here in Maryland. And that is where community solar comes in. Now, we've got here on this planet, an enormous, never-ending nuclear reactor known as the sun. 
it is constantly producing electricity. Um, these rays are collected by solar panels and these solar panels also connect to our grid, to our water tower. So again, we are getting cleaner electricity into our power supply. Once it's in the water tank, the water tower, the grid, um, electricity is all the same. Uh, there are no clean electrons and dirty electrons. It's how the electrons are produced, how the electricity is produced, that causes the real damage. Uh, so obviously where we'd like to get, eventually, we'd like to get to the point where there are no <coughs> electricity uh, bolts that are showing in our water tank that are coming from our fossil fuels. Um, <coughs> And obviously, that is a big goal because we are still uh, less than 15% renewable uh, in our overall fuel mixture. Um, Maryland has set a goal to get to 50% by the year 2030 and 100% by the year 2040. Um, that's a big goal and community solar is going to be a big part of achieving that. In our next video, I'm going to explain how community solar actually saves you money uh, while saving the planet. Thank you very much. I uh, hope this, this has been helpful. Welcome back uh, to Neighborhood Sun's wonderful offices. Uh, I'm doing a, another video, uh, probably the one that we expect is going to get the most views. That is explaining how subscribing to Community Solar actually saves you some money. Um, in a previous video, I had showed you this little neighborhood where we have hotel or an apartment building. We also have a couple of residences here. This one, our orange house, they use gas to heat their home. So their usage is probably not quite as much as somebody who uses electricity to heat and cool their home in the summertime. So this person here probably only needs about that much solar uh, to power their home for the entire year. This hotel, Motel, apartment building, has a bunch of subscribers. They use a lot of electricity. So they're gonna be getting four panels because they need more electricity to power their uh, residences. Finally, this last person here, they use electricity to heat, cool their home, and they have a couple of teenagers that play video games all day. They're gonna need two solar panels. Now, the amount of electricity that we attribute to your home uh, that we apportion to your home uh, is based upon the amount of electricity that you used in the previous 12 months. Um, that way, we have a good estimate of about how much electricity you're going to need for the next 12 months. It's not exact, uh, and we don't want to oversupply because then you're paying for something that you're not using. So, we typically try to get you to 75 to 80 percent of the electricity that you're planning to, to use that year. However, one thing to remember is that Pepco, by law, uh, is required to purchase the electricity that is generated by these solar panels at the full market price. Um, say for example, right now, Pepco is charging 20 cents per kilowatt hour uh, for people that are getting their electricity. When these solar panels are producing electricity on behalf of these different residences, Pepco has to buy that electricity at the full 20 cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, I use 20 cents because it makes the math easier. Uh, it's typically in the 13 to 16 cents range. Um, now each month, they purchase that electricity. That electricity goes onto the grid. Everybody's using it that's connected, even those that are not subscribed. Um, however, uh, they do not pay you with cash. What they do is they put credits on your electric bill. Um, so, this person here, um, let's just say that they get $100 for the electricity that was generated. Petco is going to put that as a credit on your electric bill. It has absolutely nothing to do with the amount of electricity that they used that month. It is a separate transaction. If they were out of the country, 
and they turned everything in their household off, they'd still have to pay a service fee and they'd still have to pay uh, a, a bunch of fees that are associated with having an account. But if their electricity usage is zero, their electricity costs are going to be zero, they're still going to get $100 in credits uh, because Pepco is buying the electricity that that panel uh, created. In many cases, uh, especially in the summertime, there are people that will have negative Pepco bills. Um, those credits do roll over to the following month. And as we go into winter time and we're getting less than 14 hours of sunlight, in fact, uh, I'm recording this video in the end of December where we have the least sunlight, there's maybe seven hours of sunlight available. So the number of credits that are being generated, the amount of uh, money that Pepco is attributing to your uh, electric bills is going to go down and be at its lowest in the winter time. It likewise will be at its peak in July and August <clears throat> of the summertime. For many people that's nice because they run their air conditioner 24-7, uh, so they need those high credits to offset their high Pepco bills. <clears throat> this person here, twice as many panels as this person this person's going to get about $200 in credits. <clears throat> and then finally, these residences here, which may be several residences, um, they have four panels. They're going to end up getting $400 in credits, <clears throat> which seems like a lot. But remember, there are multiple people living there and they're splitting the bills. <clears throat> so. 100 200 400 dollars in credits how do you save money if you're getting a discount from neighborhood sun of five percent you're getting a hundred dollars in credits you're only paying neighborhood sun 95 dollars so you saved five dollars that month likewise these people they're going to be paying us $190, which means they save $10 that month. <clears throat> and obviously the math continues. For those people who uh, get additional uh, discounts because they've referred friends, that $10 savings and that $5 savings can double, triple, uh, for more people that they bring to our program. Um, so it makes a lot of sense if you think of it this way. That $200, that $100, that $400, um, think of it as a coupon that is being applied to your Pepco bill. Um, I'm gonna pause for a second because I'm gonna cover this up with a large uh, blown up Pepco bill to show you where you can find where those credits are. Uh, so hold on just a moment, please. We are back again. But the first thing that I wanna do is just show you that we have one, two, three pages to a typical Pepco bill. Um, in this bill, down here at the bottom of page one, you will see the amount of money that is owed to Pepco. In this case, no payment due. The reason they have no payment due is because on page two, you can see what their charges were, how much electricity they used, taxes, and Power Maryland, um, <clears throat> and over here on page three, you can see that they had a total of $90.91 in credits uh, on their Pepco bill from the solar power that was generated. In this case, it was the CNM credit PMSNTE01. That is the farm that those folks were subscribed to. This is an actual bill uh, with obvious personal information redacted. Um, so they ended up with $90.91 in credits, $86 in their total electric delivery charges in credits. Uh, so even though they used, um, where's the amount that they used? <clears throat> they used $74 in electricity but at $86 in credits. So they actually have a negative $12 and change balance going into the following month. Uh, again, this 
was uh, from August and September. Uh, so it's not surprising that they ended up with a negative balance because the solar farms produce more electricity in the summertime. Now that we're in the middle of winter, they're going to start to have to owe a little bit of money each month to PEPCO uh, or BGE. Um, for those of you who are in BGE or Potomac Edison, uh, looking into 2020 when we're going to be having projects there, <clears throat> thankfully the BGE bills are a lot less complicated and we'll show a sample of that um, as uh, an aside or another part of our website. Um, it is a lot less complicated than the PEPCO bills. Um, but if you know where to look, page three uh, at the top uh, is where you'll see credits for most people. Sometimes it's at the bottom of page two, but you will look for CNM credit, which tells you exactly how much PEPCO is giving you for the electricity that your panels produce. Now, in a month, these folks will be getting a bill from Neighborhood Sun for 5% less than the $90.91 credits that they receive. Quick math, that's about a $4.50 savings. So, it's not gonna buy you a Tesla, but it is paying less money for clean electricity. Um, over the course of a year, that means $60, $100 in savings. <clears throat> $100 in savings to save the planet uh, seems like a very low price to me. Um, I hope you enjoy the videos. I hope they're instructional. Again, like I said in the first video, if you do have additional questions, do not hesitate at all to call Neighborhood Sun and talk to either me, Maddie, uh, or you can also talk to Zach Perkins. Uh, we're more than happy to answer your questions. It is helpful if you have your bill in front of you. Um, and we can point to where it is that you want to find what you're looking for. I hope you have a wonderful new year. Thank you for taking the time to watch.